So I want to thank Ramsey Paul for bringing this one to my attention. Apparently now, we are justified in murdering children. Yes, we are justified in murdering children. How are we justified in that? Oh, we'll get to that in a minute. Who is advocating such a policy? Well, it's Dr. Francisca Minerva, whatever her last name is, who is a research associate and ethicist, moral philosopher, medical ethicist, at Oxford University, who has apparently been receiving death threats after advocating this position. Hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, I would say, folks, that uh, let us attack the lunacy and not the person that it comes from. Apparently, she's quoted as saying that it is not policy what she's advocating. Ah, yes, the naivete. That I love the little naive positions people hold. Well, let me inform you then, good doctor, that if we look back upon, let's say, such things as Roe v. Wade, uh, the justices don't work within a vacuum. Okay, They probe society in different realms of society to inform their decisions, which transforms into oh, law, policy. <laughs> Who do you think uh, are some of the people they go to and read about and ask about and talk to to inform those positions? Well, they just happen to be medical ethicists. Yeah, moral philosophers. <laughs> what a surprise, huh? And uh, others, you know, not just them, scientists, you know, things of that nature. Yeah. So, she also has published in a respectable journal, which has surprised me. I guess. I guess not so surprising these days. Okay, well, what does she say? Let's look a little bit at this. I haven't read the whole paper yet. I'm not going to do a whole breakdown here. But let us look a little bit at this. I will leave a link to it. It's freely available online. I'm going to look at just a bit of it here. Now, as often happens with these things, the language that contemporarily goes along with things as murder... Uh, we find distasteful, so we ch we want to change that language, right? So she says that she wants to call it afterbirth abortion rather than infanticide, uh, murder of children. Why? Well, because the moral status... Oh, come on. <laughs> the moral status of the individual killed is comparable with that of a fetus on which abortions in the traditional sense are performed rather than that of a child. Hmm. She would also like to call it uh, youth, uh, instead of euthanasia, she'd ra rather call it afterbirth abortion, because the best interest of the one who dies is not necessarily the primary criterion for the choice. Right. It's a nice, it's a nice selfish position. We want to kill this, this burden, right? <laughs> Fucking lunatic. All right, let's look at how she justifies this. We take person to mean an individual who is capable of attributing to her own existence some basic value. Hmm. Let's look at that again. Capable of attributing to her own existence some basic value. Now, ethicist arguments aside, right? Uh, justification for existence itself, right? I'm not going to get into that part. We're going to look at it on an individual level. Because what we want to get to here is that where is her line of demarcation going to be? Clearly she's blurred the line uh, past birth. But when does the moment come where you attribute to your existence some basic value? When does that happen? What this is really going to come down to is free will versus determinism. But leaving that aside, though, for now, when does that moment of your life occur? Some philosophers describe this uh, moment where you, you suddenly realize that you exist, that you are in the world, so to speak. Sometimes it doesn't happen for many, many, many years or a little bit over time definitely doesn't happen before uh, most people can't remember anything by the way before they're even uh, 
four, let's say, even five. Some I can't myself. I can't remember much of any of my life before the age of seven. But that flash of of understanding that flash of it's almost like it's an, and that's also what this is going to come down to is epistemology when do you know it's also a nurture I'm sorry a nature um, versus right now I'm talking about free will you could think of nature versus well, free will you could think of it that way right because everything that you are is essentially an automated response your brain is built to be that way so hunger you can't control your hunger it's just going to come upon you of course you could do it through drugs but <laughs> right I mean when do you truly understand death as when does that come upon you and then to know to have that knowledge that it would be a loss so this woman is essentially, you can kill your children as late as seven, eight, nine years old. Who knows, right? The woman is a lunatic and certainly should not be working as a moral philosopher for some medical board somewhere. Well, I mean, I'm not going to go into much anymore of this. You can read the paper yourself and it's very depressing. Very sad to see society going this way. I suppose it is the logical conclusion. I mean, with all the arguments and justification we made for abortion and no, you know, trying to convince people of what is clearly, you know, the value, right? Twisting their value to be the opposite of what it is. It's only a logical conc conclusion to extend that beyond birth. I mean, why not? I mean, you're, you life is going okay for you 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 have a, a child suddenly you lose everything you're on the street and you know you got a six month old with you I get it's okay to kill it now because well you're in a in a bad position why not it's same thing for ab ab abortion right I mean you're in a bad economical position in life and you get pregnant it's, you're justified on that now for having an abortion. So why not extend that? Well, anyways. Alright, so that's it. Peace out, my brothers, sisters, and everyone in between.